From that interview, we move on now to agenda setting for the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Last week, Justice Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed was confirmed the 18th Chief Justice of Nigeria. Some senior advocates of Nigeria spoke to Law Weekly about some of the issues it should be focusing on. I think the system is crying out for many reforms. Everyone knows about the issue of delay, but perhaps more than delay is Nigeria's civil procedure, and I think to an extent criminal procedure. There is an obsession with matters of form and procedure. And I believe that that was a question that Senator Abaribe was asking um, the CJN during his confirmation hearing. How could you preside over a system which is so obsessed with matters of form and technicality, matters of procedure? The system, and to an outsider looking at the system, they often comment that Nigerian courts take refuge in technicalities when they want to pervert the course of justice. Mm -hmm. And the public is to an extent justified in believing that that is the case. I think that for any person who is at the helm of affairs of the judiciary, there's an urgent task to free Nigerian law from such really trivialities and from such obsession. There's an urgent need for a root and branch reform of Nigerian civil procedure, especially these rules on jurisdiction and procedure. One thing that worries me is that we think our greatest problem is corruption. I don't think so. It's a big problem. I think mediocrity is a greater problem that we have. So corruption for many of us is simply about collecting money and bribery and corruption. You know, just exchange of money for, for favor. But then there are many people that don't take any money for favors, but kill more people. So the medical doctor that doesn't go to work, or the, you know, the doctor that treats his patients without any due regard or care, is killing more people probably than the man that took a bribe to treat the patient. And just, just because he's mediocre. There are many governors and ministers that are not collecting money or collecting bribes, but they're just totally useless and mediocre. So some of the problems we have in the judiciary today is not, I mean, I don't know how many judges we have in Nigeria, but they're probably now, you know, they're well over a thousand. Definitely. I'm nearly certain that uh, it wouldn't be said that majority of them collect bribes. But it would be said that majority of them write very bad judgments. It would be said that a lot of them do not display any courage. It would be said of them that many of them do not display an understanding of the role of the judiciary in society. That a lot of judges do not know that judges help in shaping policy and the fundamentals of society. Now that's a greater problem. So the judge that collects one million or ten million to decide in my favor and I win and you lose is not good. But the judge that doesn't collect any money, but just doesn't know his work, and you win, is equally bad because the ends of justice have not been served. And you know what? That corrupt judge can write a brilliant judgment that will be unassailable, and he would have written it that way anyway, but you don't give him money. But the other judge who is mediocre would never write a good judgment. And, has, and it would never take money. And I think we need to begin to look at that mediocrity. We need to look at that in our public service and even in the private sector. Because in the private sector, many of us cut corners. And many of us have no standards. Many of us are not courageous. I mean, gone was the day when the courts will lambast government. We don't see that again. And so, 
This is some of the things that I think, when you say what can be done, these are some of the things that we have to look at. And there are people that will tell you that they do not mind if um, there is a root and branch um, to correction in the Supreme Court and in the Court of Appeal and in the Federal High Court and in other courts. I don't think you can set an agenda for the Chief Justice. Uh, the, the task of the court is clear. They adjudicate on matters between different, either between government and the uh, individual or between individuals. And what we just demand from the courts is that uh, there should be some transparency in how they conduct the affair. We want judgments that will be of such high quality that people will not begin to query the uh, rationale or reasons for the judgment. You find that um, people are not very happy with uh, the decision in the Oshun State one, where you say, okay, because a judge sit on the panel, you deprive the man uh, of a, is a, a meritorious hearing. He has nothing to do with how, whether the man sits or not. That is why Senator Abaribe was taking the Chief Justice on, that before you've had this policy that you will do substantial justice. Why are you resorting to technicality? That one, what, whatever may be their reason, the ordinary man on the street will find it difficult to accept. So it's not so much, well you can call it an agenda, but it's not so much like setting an agenda, but more like they should do this work well. There should be quality judgments that will inspire uh, the citizens, that will command the respect of people. And just before we go, let's bring you a quick recap of some of the top stories we're tracking in the courtroom. The Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal sitting in Abuja has fixed August the 21st for parties to adopt their final addresses. The Chairman of the Tribunal, Justice Mohamed Garba, fixed the date after the parties closed their cases on Thursday. The People's Democratic Party, the PDP, and its candidate, Atiku Abubakar, had filed a petition to challenge the victory of President Mohamed Buhari in the February the 23rd presidential election. Two days after his defense in the petition, President Buhari, through his counsel, senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Wale Olanik Bekun, closed his case on Thursday. His party, the APC, said it will not call witnesses in the petition of the PDP and the former vice president. In a related development, the Supreme Court has fixed August the 20th to hear an application filed by the People's Democratic Party and its candidate, Atiku Abubakar, challenging the request to access the Independent National Electoral Commission's central server. The parties had alleged that the server housed the results of the poll electronically transmitted by the Independent National Electoral Commission during the exercise. But on June the 24th, in a ruling, the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal had dismissed the claims by the PDP and al Haji Abubakar that INEC electronically transmitted the results of the February the 23rd poll to the said central server. INEC denied the claim, insisting that it never transmitted the results of the polls to any server whatsoever, but the results were collated and declared manually. President Mohamed Buhari and his All Progressives Congress, whose victory at the polls is being challenged by the petitioners at the tribunal, also opposed the petitioners' request for access to the said INEX server. <laughs> Away from the election petition, the Islamic movement in Nigeria, otherwise known as the Shiite group, has sued the federal government over its decision to proscribe the group. The IMN also announced the suspension of its street protests. It said the protests are being used to call for the release of its detained leader, Ibrahim el Zagzaki, his wife and others, and was suspended to give room for some new openings into the resolution of the matter, chief of which is that it will give room for the proper prosecution of the court case instituted by the group against its prescription. Ibrahim el Zagzaki, his wife and several others have been detained since 2015. And we round off with a report that the trial of ousted Sudanese leader Omar al-Bashir on corruption charges will begin on August the 17th. The former president had failed to appear in court last Wednesday for the first session. Reports say authorities were unable to bring him to court owing to security reasons.
that's the program this week. Don't forget that you can watch it again or any other past episodes on our YouTube channel. Kindly give us feedback via any of our social media handles. I'm Shola Sheeli. Thank you for watching.